what's up y'all we're gonna step away from the residential locksmith starter series for a minute because i'm working on a bunch of sergeant lever handles this is actually a franken lever it's a lsda lever attached to a sergeant chassis uh we're gonna talk about that in a minute but we do have a bunch of these and i've been able to take a few apart and decode keys for the most part worked a bunch of them but there are still some one-offs and i have not been able to pick any of these that i've run across so i figured i'd do a video showing them that you can take the sergeant brand lever handles of this is like the seven line or the 6500 line grade two lever handle very common on interior doors for the most part in buildings and also very common for locksmiths to come along and switch them out when the the lever starts sagging because that's one of the biggest problems with them is the lever will start sagging on the sergeants they do not have a clutch mechanism in this particular style so after a lot of use they just get all wonky and you end up having to replace them in this case again i have taken apart quite a few of them there we've got a bunch of cylinders here i just took this one apart and made a key for it hoping that it was that missing number key that fits a certain section of this building however the key i made didn't work the other lever that i pulled off that i thought should have so i'm going to do a video on taking these apart in case you run up on a sergeant lever handle and can't get it picked yes you can take them apart so let's get started on it so let's move this guy out of the way so how i know this is a franken lever is because of several things number one the chassis spring mechanism here while it was used across several manufacturers uh, sergeant was particularly notorious for it number two the discussion here the, the this trim having it rounded like that tells me that that is the sergeant shape i don't know which uh, what do they call it and the the shape of the lever handle is very uncommon for a sergeant it's more likely to be something like that also the little grippy thing on the inside is made differently everything including see how that cylinder it's got that gap around it what they did was they took one of these sergeant regular cylinders and and then a lever handle from an lsda or something and put it in there while that will work because the face of the core here is smaller uh, it won't work in reverse so if you tried to take a standard key cylinder has a bigger front plug face core whatever you want to call it you can see it does not it doesn't go through there so you cannot take a standard cylinder and use it in an original sergeant lever handle obviously without modification you could take the core out and run it around on a belt sander or something and, and make it work but it's just it kind of throws it off a little bit so you don't you don't really want to do that just replace it with something else so let's go ahead and take this guy apart uh, i was hoping to not have to do this but since we do we're just going to video it here and let me move this out of the way again this one this one should have been the key nope not that this one should have been the key for this guy but it doesn't work uh, there was one other master pin in there that knocked down the third position to a 10 but that's like two to ten which is an eight max which sergeant does have a really deep max a nine max according to that anyway but i don't think they would maybe use that i don't know i could cut that down and and it may work but let's take it apart and find out just for video purposes here so once again let's move this guy the spring clip that holds the chassis together take that off take your chassis off and this is why i mentioned in the schlage a series video i'll put the link up here to that how the a series was kind of the one that taught everybody back in the day that you know once you learn how to do this on that uh you can pretty much take apart any chassis like this now again we do have some issues with uki uki grease old factory grease that's dried and become hard so that does cause some issues with these guys so it's actually i guess in a good way 
Make sure and hold over here. The springs will kind of not jump out like the A will, but you just want to be careful that they don't go anywhere. So I'm going to cup it and then just take it off. So kind of just like the A series, boing, boing. you have very similar parts. This goes under that. This goes into this notch right there and then this peg goes into that hole which pushes down when you push this knob in or the the interior thumb turn button Ooh, whoa, what are we doing here right, when you push that down it pushes that in and that's how everything gets locked so let's go ahead and yank this guy out like that and that stabilizes it so that this is one of the main things that really keeps it in not even the retainer uh, but it, it you can see how right there this this part is blocking the retainer when you turn the key it lets that retainer push forward so one one good and bad thing about the sergeant locks is number one you can pop this off it's not easy to do because there is a cap in there that kind of holds it holds it on just like that once we get it apart we should see it uh, so it's not as easy to do but you really don't need to worry about that uh, you can get real forceful and maybe pry it out of the way but for the most part you do not have to worry about that because once we take this guy out it lets off enough pressure for you to be able to poke the retainer well on regular sergeants anyway I'm not sure about this franken lever by any means let's see franken lever may be different than actual sergeant levers so i'll push that down and hope the heck it gives enough okay let's give it a whack ah there we go get a little whack and it flexes enough to be able to pop this guy off all right, and then we see your regular sergeant core there. We're going to go ahead and put this back on. Here's an example of that hardened grease. So, yeah, icky, icky stuff right there. While I'm here, I'm just going to start hosing it down little by little because this guy's going back in use even with the wrong handle on it. So, put that in, put that in. and this will drop down notice i'm not using the springs yet because with these you can just kind of kind of drop everything into position like that like it's supposed to be and then angle it up where did our springs go make sure your springs seat on those little round circles just like that and then I'm going to push it in and let it snick into place over the little tab that's right there just like that make sure everything stays and push in and down 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 and I'm going to hold this in position and give that a turn make sure our springs are correct just like that good and uh, and then re re chassis cover it here and we're gonna grab our spring usually with this little spring mechanism I'll put the short leg in it's just easier to do this way short leg and then come in make sure it goes on the other side of that flex in bump and bump so once again, give it a test. Yeah, it looks like it's working. Okay, we are good. Now let's figure out why this guy was not working. Sergeant cylinders can be a little tricky to shim. Uh, and also the clip you can't do like we did with uh, other cylinders you know regular clips you can just kind of push it around and off but because it has this e-clip that goes down in there 
you kind of have to go straight off typically for that for lack of better tools i'll grab a pair of pliers or something and then just wiggle and push it off all right we're going to grab our shim shim maru which is right here i've got a ln blank which fits all the l keyways and a shim so taking sometimes it's really really difficult to get your shim in there because certain cylinders actually were really tight tolerances so what i'll do is i'll come in and i'll narrow the shim a little bit on one end this one's bent but i'm going to go ahead and continue to use it uh, oh yeah 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 well, we got some markings there give that a little squirt and let's get to shimming these have been all particularly hard to shim but let's hope not for this one all right i'll just pass six that's one of the problems when your shim gets bent it makes it hard to keeps crumpling on you okay there's five i may end up having to redo this shim yep that one's not gonna that one's not gonna work out i'll show you with a regular unmodified shim there's just a lot of surface area to go in there this one actually seems to be a lot easier than the other ones were okay so there's six there's five and there's four and there was three two and one let's wiggle 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 I'm kind of putting turning pressure on it here Yep, there's two and one. Yay. Okay, grab our hollow plug follower. Again, you could take this this off. It just, you know, just clips in. But it's totally not necessary with the hollow plug follower. All right, let's see what we got here. Let's see why this guy didn't work. It sh really should have. Unless they just have a bunch of... Oh, wow. Oh, wow, we have a bunch of master pins here, y'all. Yeah. Okay, let me get my little plug deal so that we can investigate this. Where'd it go? Little plug deal, plug holder. And uh, we're going to check this upper for the master pins that may have stayed in the upper chambers. I've got my hand down here to catch them. Oh, yeah, this one's, this one's heavily master keyed. Okay, that was number two. And it certainly doesn't match any of the other keys. I can already tell so far. So unless this was just rekeyed and somebody didn't clear the upper chambers and left old master pins in there, then we have a whole different master key here. Okay, so... Well, some of the cuts are the same. Those front two. Okay, let's get this over on the other bench so that I can see what I'm doing here. Careful, careful, careful. I don't wanna lose any. All right, so these were the initial ones. And then this was the secondary key right here that ended up being all the classrooms. So it's actually, it doesn't matter me showing you this because I'm literally, I'm literally rekeying everything. We're just trying to find keys to save me a little time. And again, 337, that was the last one. So we're gonna check those, those two front ones one more time with the three and the three. And this is where it's good to keep your space and depth. Ooh, that's got master pins in every chamber. Good space and depth keys are very handy for these situations. 
So we are just gonna take these guys off. We definitely have a three and a three. We definitely have a really thin wafer right there. Oh, come back. Another wafer right there. And then this guy. Uh, do we have another? Nope. No, nope. gotta make sure we don't have a stacked pens. All right, we got three, three, and three. So we'll go three, three. And then down here at the end, three. All right, and then this looks like five and five to me. So let's go down to five. Five and six, pretty dang close. We're gonna say five and five. I think six will be too deep. Let's check it though. Yeah, five and five. So, so five and five, and then that third position was even deeper. We're gonna say it's a seven to match that other seven. was definitely a seven with a four master wafer in it making it a ten and then that third position only goes up to seven so so we're gonna say plus one we're gonna say one to make it a seven this looks like a four so we'll go seven there too maybe Nope, eight. Oh, I was in a six key, hold on. Seven key, right there, yep. So three plus four. And then this guy is definitely a O. They were all over the place with this. Nope, a nine. <laughs> they uh, yeah, they were all over the numbering system with this thing, weren't they? Yep. So three uh, to nine would be six. And then uh, this one right here, we determined was a seven. Drop you back in there. This guy. be a nine as well so five to nine would be another four wafer right there and then uh, looks like we got a one another one wafer so that would be a six after we add that up seven yeah we're gonna say seven so we got a two right there let's check that seven seven yeah seven is the third one there is a one and then three with probably a five wafer in there so we'll say eight or nine Yep, it's a nine. So yeah, there's no rhyme or reason to this whole whole system that they got there, for sure. Three to nine is six. So seven, nine, seven, seven, nine, seven, nine, seven, nine. I bet you anything that's the master since obviously an idiot set this whole system up. So if we go cut 
seven nine seven nine seven nine. That's a, that sounds like a key. Seven nine seven nine seven nine. It just honestly sounds like some something somebody would do for a master key system. But if we compare it to all the other ones, nine zero. Uh, I don't know why that had a a, a, a I just it doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, it could very well be the three three six five five three, and seven nine seven nine seven nine is a change key. But I'm taking a wild guess that that it's uh, that that's the master key. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this guy and see how it works. Another master? We got like five masters so far. Seven nine seven nine seven nine, huh? Okay, I think we are done with you. Uh, if the keys that I've made so far don't work. Literally, this is probably uh, a large percentage of the operating keys. So, so even if it doesn't work on others, then I guess I'll just have to take them apart. But you can see this guy was the last one, and these two doors were side by side, and they were in what it would be considered like an office area nothing and then over here nothing these were all a whole nother key that uh, don't really have uh, master pins in them necessarily there's like one or two master pins but they don't coincide with any of the masters that I've cut so far so there you go y'all how to do the sergeant deal or just, you know put it back together put your clip back on dupe I put it back in the in the lever handle, but honestly, I have to rekey these, so I'm not going to put them back together right now. But you put it together just like you would any other lever. Put it in, turn the key, push in, and then let it go, and it snicks into position. Even with a Franken lever, <laughs> uh, and then these guys up here. Let's see here. Just out of case, those were the first two I took off. Yep. Nope. Nope, nope. And then all these uh, really, I hadn't taken a lot of them apart, but because the key works, I really am just going to be dumping everything that's in them out and rekeying everything, setting up a whole new master key system. So that's it on uh, Sergeant Lever Handles. In case you run up on one, yes, you can get it off by taking it off if you can't pick it, which is pretty hard. I honestly, Sergeants are one of the harder ones to deal with faux show so uh, in case you need to know and run up on one of these guys yep you can certainly take out the chassis and then just push the retainer after that retainer quote retainer guard or whatever you want to call that little center pivot is out of the way thanks for watching this video hopefully you, you uh, will be able to utilize that information if you ever run up on a sergeant lever handle and uh, can't get it open i'm tired of cutting various keys for these guys i could have sworn like i mentioned on saturday morning live that this the ones that had this this 10 cut at the tip which is very common coming out of the schlage or the sergeant factory masters when you order mass sergeant was one of the ones where you could order master key systems and they were very very happy with this 10 cut on the end however come to find out uh none of the tens none of the tens worked in any of the other locks and it actually ended up being this low cut guy that fit uh, a large variety of them. So we're gonna get all these changed and these keys will be no good after that. Get them rekeyed to a whole new master key system and move on with our life once again to yet another job. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments on this video or any other ones, you know what to do. We'll catch you next video.